Welcome, guys, back to our podcast. It used to be called Raw Shit, but we have a drama queen right here who called it Classic Culture. All right? It didn't, um, it didn't fit well with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, that's fine. It didn't feel right. It doesn't mean we're going to talk about classic bodybuilding. <laughs> but it's too classic physique, guys, trying to interview a, a, a super heavyweight. So yeah. uh, let's let's see how it goes. Thank you very much, James Hollingshead, for, for being here. Um, it's, uh, it took a while for us to do this. I know that. You've had a, a bit of a bumpy ride since the beginning of the year. Uh, with oh, the, uh, this year's been nuts for everybody, I think. <laughs> I know, I know. But it's, it's probably hard for you, um, you know, the passing of, of Luke, uh, being your training partner. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure it's probably harder for you than probably all of us. So uh, how, how do you yeah, feel now? Tough. No, it's been tough. It's been... Uh... I'm all right. I'm I'm good. I'm good because the the thing is, like, and I say this to everybody, the thing with Luke is that I have no bad memories with him. So it's really it's really hard for me to even actually get upset because whenever I think of a moment or a time shared in his presence, they always involved laughter and fucking about. So yeah. for me, like, if anything, when I think of Luke, I don't see I don't see him gone. I see the good times. It's a little bit different when you lose. It depends how you lose someone and when you lose someone. Like when I lost my mum, it was a different story. Like, yeah, either doubt you see the um, I saw the downward spiral. I was there to witness it for a period of time, you know, and it was hard harder to shake memories of mum than it was of Luke because Luke's memories are all good. So, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, so the one thing I will say is, if you lose a friend and it's quite quick, I know it sounds crazy, but you find yourself much quicker healing and being able to accept it and looking at the good times. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, how's uh, how's your training now? Good man. Fucking training is awesome. I've been. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. Like, obviously, in the situation where having a gym throughout the uh, the pandemic and being able to have access and train and stuff. So, really, I just used it as a. Uh, I used it as a time to kind of try and get as head as I can. <laughs> quite honestly, um, it's been very, very consistent. At the beginning of the um, lockdown, I. Inv- I got in touch with Patrick Tor yeah. uh, to do my training for me because obviously I wasn't able to train with Luke because yeah. he wasn't training at the gym and I wasn't able to. So I just wanted something that I could follow for the period of being away. Yeah, um, yeah, did that for a few weeks and loved it. So I just said to Patrick, do you mind taking over everything? Because the guy was just sound like, you know when someone's a good person just by your interactions with them. And yeah, I was getting on with him so much. It was just like, it just seemed pointless only letting him do the training. So I just thought, fuck it, let's... Uh, Let's see what you can do. And, and plus, he's got a history of being really good at what he does with people that kind of suit my, you know, somatotype kind of people that are like me, like big Caucasian guys from Europe. He has an ability to bring them in well. So I just put two and two together and I was like, you know, it just fucking makes sense. So yeah, training's been great, man. Honestly, training's probably the best it's ever fucking been. His training looks pretty insane. It's good, man. It's just really intense. It's just, um, you know... Training's funny because it's one of these things that you can't ever tell how training is when you read it on paper. Because from both ends of the spectrum, you can you can read Jordan's training on paper and think, "Fuck me, there's not a lot." Um, but I can tell you there is when you do it how he meant to do it. And then Patrick's, you can look up and be like, "Fuck me, there's too much." Yeah, so, you know, etc. So it, it can be one way or the other. But mm. what I, have, I can say about it is for my body and how I've trained for most of my life. I'm a slightly higher volume person. I'm able to get away with it. I always recovered a bit better than some people that I trained with. So it, it suited me down to the ground as long as it was monitored. So, you know, as long as you train, you can train pretty voluminous for a while, as long as you know when to pull back. And that's kind of what we've been doing. A few weeks like that, and then a few weeks pulling back, a few weeks like that, a few weeks pulling back. So who's training with you? Um, it's just my, uh, one of my, the staff at the gym, Steve, manager. He's cool. He's a nice kid. Um, so he's been training with me and it's been good because he's put on like 10 fucking kilos since the beginning of the lockdown. <laughs> yeah, man. He, yeah, got... he's, getting like, he's getting first class train, personal training, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Take advantage. Uh, but, but it's yeah. good for me because you know what was, was nice for me is I could see him changing so it motivates me because if I could see him changing and it's working and I'm like, fuck yeah, it must be working because yeah. I've got it happening in front of me. So yeah. uh, it's been I'll very be- good. I've been training with my missus and seen um, she she wants to do a bikini show. And it's a similar thing. The progress that she's made in 12 weeks training on me as compared to training by herself is actually crazy. And she's like, 
she's training harder than some guys I know now. It's crazy. Hey, it's actually people motivated. Do, like, people but, downplay women. People downplay yeah, like they're so stupid. They can tap in and fucking go. Like definitely. They have no mercy. No mercy. And a lot of the women in my gym do train harder than men. And I'll say that straight. Yeah. Like they kick up they they lifting like pound for pound the weights they're lifting in my gym like the girls fucking hell like absolutely yeah. I, I I agree with that I've I've Crazy. seen them in in most gyms uh, uh there was a there was a do you remember do you remember that when they put this thing on TikTok I think where they 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 is it a throw throw a, a soap and then Dexter was there like you know everyone was you know kind of going from gym to to uh, to suits do you remember that that video they put out. Oh, I do know the. I think I know the one. I'm not really yeah. on TikTok, but I know the one. Yeah, but th there was one where, which, with 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 uh, like female bodybuilders or women's physique. Man, the physiques, damn. Crazy. You know they and you know what? And it's probably it's quarantine, and you'd think like they're gonna come out of shape. I mean, <laughs> you know, they, they look. They, they all look good. The, the girls have been the ones that I've seen in the garden doing the deadlifts, doing the fucking squats. Yeah. Doing you know, all the big hard movements, the ones yeah. that ain't playing. So yeah. mm. anything, and I always think this as well. When I look at when I look at like leg development on people, for example, most of the time I'm more envious of women's leg development. So that mm. tells me that tells me a lot because I've seen how they train legs, man. They go ham, like they're doing three days a week and shit. And I'm like, yeah, they do. Man, yeah. Honestly, I think people don't understand. <laughs> like, yeah. I trained. Uh, Jade, Jade Packer, I don't know if you know her, but she's, um, she's in the wellness division. And so I, mm. I was training her just legs twice a week. Yeah. I got, so she's squatting 100 kilo, deep, deep reps with her heels jacked up for 20 reps. Madness. For 20 Madness. reps. Like for me to get some guys that are trained to do 20 reps is, you know, they just won't do it. But oh, unfortunately, man. tapping it, well, for me anyway, tapping into that higher rep range has always been good for me and good for anyone. Especially, I've yeah, and I think especially for legs. I think legs, yeah, legs requires... Legs. Legs requires those kind of rep ranges, at least as part of the in, of training. They may not be at all of it, but they certainly need to be there. And I found yeah. that, especially for detail. Yeah, definitely. Like, and people will say that sounds that's bullshit. Like, and I, but it's not. Like, no, no way. It's not bullshit. Like, detail comes from repetition and, and working. Like, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it shows on stage, man. It shows. Yeah. It does show on stage. It does. That's Tell why like, the classic guys never were, never were hard from the legs down. You know, you look at Arnie, his physique, and that was striated everywhere in his, in his chest, the details for his delts, everything like that. But then the legs were soft, but they didn't train legs how they... Yeah, not like, how yeah, not like how we can now. That yeah, proves. I, I feel yeah. like on that, subject, on that subject, I feel like the one like movement that's always really neglected in modern training is leg extension. Mm. Like, I feel like people think it's a pussy exercise, but it's fucking awesome. No, no. Like, it's yeah. one of the, the, there's nothing, I always say this, there's no exercise on legs that can get your quadriceps as short as a leg extension and that much tension. Yeah, absolutely. Because like absolutely. Cause, it's, it's caught from two sides. Exactly. It's, like, it, it, it's like someone holding you from your neck and you can't go anywhere. It's the same <laughs> movement. You're sitting you down go. and that is only moving that way. And there's, the only thing that's going to get your quadriceps fucking that short is yeah. literally an extension. So if you, yeah, do, if, yeah, you yeah, think yeah. Except, if you think leg extensions are uh, not, don't have a place, Fucking do one. <laughs> you miss it as well because obviously your, your quad, your rectus femoris is partly your hip flexor as well. That's why it gets it so short because there's not there's no exercises that you put your leg in that position and, and exactly. extend it like that. You know? Exactly. But uh, John, I'm you do it differently. Uh, you do it differently though. You do your uh, your your leg extensions very different. Uh, you you kind of lift your hip up. I don't know how you do that. I do that yeah, well. so I, yeah, so I don't just when I when I do leg extensions, I try not to focus on like the teardrop. I try and use it to more hit like my rectus femoris, yeah, like right at the top by the hip. So after I've extended, I also try and lift my entire leg straight, you know? Yeah. Like I said, because it's like a hip flex, you know? You ever done uh, like a, what's, what's, I don't do them, them things uh, on the, on the, what are they called? The chairs. What's the big chair? I don't, I don't know what they're called. Yeah. I always forget. I don't even know. You what do, called. Yeah, you do the ab crunches. You pull yeah, your yeah. knees I think, up. I think it's called a parallel chair, right? Yeah, 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 something like that. And you do ab crunches and pull your knees up. It normally starts to hurt your quads as well because it's, yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah, so it gets into the psoas, then as well. Like you get that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I remember, I remember you were doing one of the exercises for hamstrings. We were doing lane curls, and uh, you showed me how to lift my knees up yeah. to get to get the work all the way down to the tiny. Yeah, sure. Into the yeah. glutes, yeah. Flex into the glutes, the glutes. Up into the movement as well. And that's why, and that's that, why I like glute ham raise. If you do a glute yeah. ham raise correctly, yeah, wicked. Yeah, you get that similar contraction where you're getting because you're getting the. Like you just said, they get the hamstring fully short, but if you can raise the knee 
the the, 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 the uh, kind of the uh, the top of your quad pressed hard. Yeah. Mm. You're raising, then you get that peak contraction. You're yeah, bringing yeah. It closer to the glute, and then your glutes contracted as well. Yeah, you're shortening yeah. that tra- that posterior chain. Yeah, yeah. You get yeah. maximum fucking contraction. It's just the best thing. Yeah, definitely. I think people, a lot of people miss out on that. It's like when you're doing like a standing hamstring curl, you know, like single leg one on the flat machine. Yeah. How many people poke their ass out? Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm forever telling people to sit up a little bit straighter, drive your hip in and let your knee lift off. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's like when you do a bicep curl on a preacher machine, you drop your shoulder into it. Yeah, 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 Imagine yeah. your shoulders, your hip and drop into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, same shit. Basic yeah. stuff. Yeah. People need to be told though, you know? And if you know you why that, that happens a lot? Ego, because people want to lift fucking heavy. Definitely. Sorry. I, I trained legs today and I went up to uh, two plates aside on a, on a squat. Yeah. And obviously, like, I've, I've had the days when I did five plates, four plates, and, you know, I did all sorts of crazy shit. And that's why I'm probably broken right now. But I swear to God, with two plates, because I was so focused into it, and I knew that this, is, this was the only leg workout I'm going to have for a while, because obviously yeah. we don't have access to gyms. Yeah. I focused so much, and I actually came home and almost fell asleep. That's how painful it was. I love yeah. that shit. That's the best you know? Yeah. Um, it's making the most out of it. And it's so expensive to, to, to try to rent a gym, like rent a gym right now and try to train at someone's place. What are they doing? They're trying to charge like a fortune. That's, a, that's what it is. So you make sure that you train your legs, your, you know, your quads, your hamstrings, your, your calves, and you try to do all those movements in an hour. Yeah. So you, the intensity goes through the roof and you end up being sore for like fucking two weeks. <laughs> do, you, do you split your quads, James, or do you do a whole leg day? Um, normally I don't, but like when we do these kind of like essentially deload phases that come every few weeks or so, yeah. um, then I will. So basically I go from training in like a dual manner, so like two body parts typically. Yeah. But probably like most most people would train, you yeah, know, like yeah, Korean yeah. kind of thing. Um, I, tip, I go from that and then when it comes to like what I would again call a, a deload instead of like weight reduction, I just spread out body parts more so that the total workload is reduced rather than weight being reduced. Very so, smart, yeah. So, like right now, like this last two weeks has been that. So, hamstrings have had their own day, uh, quadriceps have had their own day. You know, the only thing that's paired up like is obviously bicep and tricep because it's small, you're not going to fucking split those two up really. Yeah. Um, but then I'll go back now to doing probably just legs on their own day. Uh, yeah. Once the food's back up and stuff, so it just depends where you're at. But I, I splitting does. I think splitting is great if you're someone that's maybe a bit, um, inconsistent with delivering a quality workout to say hamstrings, because sometimes you bash the shit out of your quads, and obviously you're quite tired, and then strength's yeah, diminished, and hamstring. energy's diminished, and the last thing you want to do is go and do some of them big compound movements on the hamstrings because you're tired from doing the compounds on quads. Because I found when I do legs normally. I'm more likely to do the compound stuff that's more targeted for quads than mm-hmm. say the RDLs. So if I squat that day, I'm not going to fucking RDL. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? Whereas when I split them up, I definitely do both on both days, which is what I quite like. Yeah. Um, so if I can somehow juggle that, I would, that'd be the ideal, but yeah. 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 Mm, interesting. Very interesting. Well, I have a question for you, James. Do you, I've seen a lot of people do RDLs. Yeah. But then they let the weight go down to the ground and then they lift it up and do it again. Yeah. We were always, like, since, since the beginning, I was always taught to obviously come close to the ground, not to actually let it go, yeah. and then go up again. So yeah. what's this new thing that, that I'm well. seeing people drop it? Well, it's funny because I just started to do it. I, personally, I, the reason I did the um, to the ground is because by mistake, one day I was doing normal um, – what was I doing? Normal deadlift with Steve. I was doing normal deadlift with Steve. Or I was doing my old form of RDLs. Sorry, I was doing RDLs, but the way I normally do them, which is pretty much what you're saying. Yeah. No, no floor. Um, and one of the reps, I put the bar down. And I noticed that with my hips being so high when the bar was on the floor, I had this very good positioning of where I could contract my hamstrings and glutes a lot harder to generate the drive. All right. Is it a hip hinge? So for me, it, it really depends on your ability to contract. Yeah. Um, and your flexibility, mobility, all those those things come into play. Majority of people do only need to go down to their shin and come up. Honestly, that's that's all you've got to do. That's a perfect RDL. Um, I choose to do things that really challenge me. Mm. Like my training is always based on my own feelings, and and I felt the challenge from reaching to the floor and letting it stop for a second and just like recruiting from nothing like a dead stop. So I, I don't actually call it, I, I would call it a dead stop variation. So 
just like doing shoulder press, sometimes I'll do regular shoulder press. Occasionally I'll do the shoulder press with a dead stop, maybe in the uh, pins, you know, off the pins. Mm. Yeah. Both, I think both have their place. As long as you're not confused of why you're doing what, then there's no issue. But I think a lot of people probably are confused. Of course. Um, I'm, I'm doing it because the position I'm weak in is a fully lengthened position. So the, I can't get any more stretch than what I am in when I'm fully bent in half. Um, plus, I am actually trying to, I am trying to train my lower back as well on purpose because I've been told from my coach that, that I need to improve thickness from the whole posterior chain, yeah. get more thickness. So really I'm using it as a movement to just hit my whole posterior chain. Yeah. I think if I was just trying to target hamstrings then I wouldn't put my lower back in such a compromised position mm -hmm. because believe me in the way that I do it, there's a lot of lower back loads, yeah. um, which obviously when you're trying to train hamstrings directly, isn't what you ideally want to do. You want to try and yeah. uh, target a specific muscle. You want to isolate and you want to make sure that all of the load goes into that particular group. So for the majority of people who are just trying to hit hamstrings, I probably wouldn't even suggest doing it the way that I do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why I've seen a lot of people doing it that way because I have noticed in the last few weeks it's been very popular. Um, it might just be a trend for the minute because people yeah. like to do it. Uh, I don't I've know. Seen, I see most people just going too heavy on it still. Not and, that going heavy is a bad thing, but it's yeah. like whether you can actually lift the weight or not. You've and got people, to look at the human body and what it's doing in the movement. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 One of my favourite... Go one on. of my favorite things for uh, posterior has been snatch grip um, hyper extensions and Brilliant. Brilliant. weighted Brilliant. Hyper, uh, snatch grip hyper extensions. Got them off of John Meadows, man. Those they're absolutely sick. It's one of, I think, one of the best things that I've used to build up my like my actual lower lats yeah. is actually like snatch grip hyper extensions. Doing that I stuff. find the snatch grip so great because it forces you to recapular. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Grip roll. And that shoulder roll detracts a lot from where you're trying to actually like improve the quality of your back. Yeah. Mm. So if you can go for snatch grip on anything, to be fair, any type of lift that's, mm. I would say even a deadlift or yeah. an RDL or a rack pull or any of that. Yeah. If you are purposely trying to improve your back, fuck me, do it because yeah, definitely, definitely. it puts you in such a, a, a brilliant yeah. position in terms of the shoulder girdle. Yeah. 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 You can Versus actually whole... rotate your shoulders into the movement a lot tighter. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's kind of like what Joe Bennett's been going on about. Yeah. With the whole fucking baby grip handle, like, yeah, I, I'm not so fussed about that. I still like a tight grip, but what I mean is, the elbow drive is easier to drive with your lats if your hands are separated and drive it in rather than yeah. compromise. Yeah, yeah. I would, I... What did you think on that, jo uh, John? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was, I was intrigued because I understand what he's saying. Like, I've, I've got an open mind to everything, and what he's saying makes complete sense. Like, obviously, but what I realized is he was talking about, like, the talk thing, like, it depends on the, on the wrist position. But what I've always found, what I've done without being told, just because of what I've felt, is when I do T-bar rows or I do, like, old school, like, narrow grip pull-ups when I throw the, that narrow grip over a bar, is I always use what they call, it's like, a full, I think they call it a false grip in gymnastics. In gymnastics, mm -hmm. when they do the gymnastic rings, they use, I think it's called a false grip because that enables you to use your lats better. Yeah, so oh, when I do a T that rather than that. Yeah, exactly. So when I do a T bar row, I hold the bar like that and pull in like that. So essentially that makes the distance like I'm putting my wrist in that way. Yeah. yeah, because I've always felt my lats way, way better like that. So yeah. I find out with a lot of things. I I, I feel like, like I, I, I've noticed actually to be fair, my back's better now that I haven't been doing a row with that such a tight grip. Mm. Um, yeah. I still do a pull down with that because I think the pull down is great. Like I, I love the the contraction I can get like right under my armpits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. Especially if you're pulling the bar <coughs> not tight. Yeah, it. pull it right out in front of you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah in front of you. Absolutely. I always try and teach people about that doing that sort of like narrow grip pull downs right out in front of you, trying yeah. to get them to understand like it's more like a pullover movement than it is a pull down. You know? Absolutely. It's you, if you're 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 using a lot more lap because your your yeah. drive's coming from here. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Rather than um, scapula. Yeah. yeah. Just to just to add something to uh, what John was saying, do you you were saying about the the grip uh, being that way? Yeah. And if you look at it, if you if you if you try to if you try to bring your wrist down, okay, mm. automatically what happens is that your your pinkies, these last two, stay in control, and those don't actually go in. There's there's something holding it, so automatically it goes that way. Can you see that? So your pull, the whole pull goes into those two. And those yes. two are actually responsible for the full contraction of your back. Yeah. So that's why 
that way becomes a better contraction rather than going, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. with full on. You know? that's, why the, um, that's why the Mac grips are yeah. technically quite good because of the angle. Yeah. Of the, the the gun uh the gun grip whatever they call them yeah yeah, yeah. To the bottom feet, yeah you've got that grip like if you could let when you do a back movement you can essentially let go of those three yeah, yeah. if you pull you should get a, a, a larger percentage of yeah with the lats and whatnot so yeah I think most people misconstrued how to actually train your lats though you know I see so many guys without actual actual lats you know they got all upper back but no lats. You know, because they don't understand that, like they're most of the, most of the stuff they're doing is like scapular retraction. You know, you don't even yeah. need to re retract your scapula to train your lats. You know, yeah. like when I do yeah. my uh, when I do my uh, like seated rows and stuff, people think I'm you don't know how to fucking train because I when I do my seated rows, I have a rounded out back. Yeah, you're doing that. <laughs> Me? Yeah, yeah, I put in I put in through my lats. You know, yeah. I don't try and I don't try and retract my scapulas to train my upper back, and people think I'm doing it fucking wrong but I've always had to cover that's the last thing I've tried to cover in the last and I'll tell you who really helped me with that was Jordan yeah um, Jordan came down and trained stayed at mine for a few days a few years ago maybe a couple of years ago and he he drilled that into me really well yeah and, and it just showed me the difference there's this, this literally there's two things you can do in back training when you're thinking about back and like lats yeah. you, you, you're thinking about elbows whether they're, they're in and driving down yeah. without the scapula retracting yeah that, that that to be fair if i just put my arm out like that with my my back flat without pulling back and i just push yeah. down yeah i'm getting some of that recruitment there yeah definitely. Mm. versus versus like you say the whole yeah yeah and they're the two different and if you can kind of i always try and put my workouts Figure around those two yeah like yeah. a couple of that couple of that yeah. and then maybe a lower back movement and then you kind of yeah. you've done the whole lot then yeah, that's exactly that's what I, that's exactly what I do. Mm. Two movements for that, so two movements for upper back. Yeah, or retraction. Yeah, that, that we we should we should charge for this lecture, man. Do you know the problem <laughs> happened though? Do you know what happened? What happened with me is that I started getting so fucking on it with hitting the lower lats. Yeah, that my upper back actually disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, uh, I forgot to train it. So lately, yeah. literally in the last this lockdown, Patrick started me incorporating the high rows again. With the yeah, elbows yeah. flared, yeah. so that I was getting mm. upper back again because I basically hadn't fucking trained it for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I was like, oh, keep yeah. it really tight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm always uh, banging on about training to people, man. It, I think so many people are so focused on talking about like diet and they talk about like calories and macros and all this sort of stuff. And there's still so many people out there that don't actually know how to train. I was saying the other day that people should start investing more in in one to one sessions with people who know how to train. Yeah. Like online coaching is great, but a lot of people don't actually know how to implement the intensity and the actual exercises that you write down on a plan. And like it's you say crazy. there, the training, the training is the, the instigator of everything. Because if you're, yeah, you're, you're basing, you're basing someone's nutrition yeah. off, of, off of the response that should be happening from the training stimulus. And if the training stimulus isn't on par, mm. then everything's wrong from that point forward. Because yeah, yeah. Because we misconstrued the, uh, the 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 intensity that's being met, and if then, yeah. so the information's wrong. So that's the thing. If you can't, if you if someone can't get their training right, yeah. no one can fucking coach them anyway. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Because we don't have facts. We need facts, and that's why. Like, I used to like do some training, and I used to treat it like this. I never used to say to anyone, "I'll be your PT forever." I used to say, "Look, I'm going to take you for a week or so, and I'm going to give you everything you need in order to go forward." And that's more the way I like to do it because I. I thought, you know, if I have to babysit you after a week, mm. right, then you're not right for this because yeah. you're not going to do the self-education uh, part. Yeah, of course. You know, we all learn for ourselves as well. <laughs> all of us have learned off people, but we've had the fucking integrity and the bollocks to go out there and further ourselves. And, yeah. you know, that's why I, I refuse to help people that always need a handheld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they won't put I, I actually have a very, very good question for both of you. <laughs> do you do you have a movement that you do in the gym that everyone turns around and think like, "What the fuck is he doing?" Hmm. Like well, something that, that triggers. I bet he does. I bet yeah, he's I, got some funky shit. I do, uh, <laughs> I do, well, no, I do Jefferson squats, isn't it? Like Kai. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Everyone, no, no, no one has really seen anyone but Kai do them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be like, what the fuck's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do that, and uh, we we did it when we trained in that video, and we made fun of. Oh yeah. Another guy, yeah. But uh, like sometimes you walk into the gym and you have a certain movement that you do that has nothing to do with the the the, the orthodox you know yeah. way of doing things and you know, people look at you and it's like how did he get that physique doing this 
you know, and, and you, you turn around, I was like, you have no idea. I feel it where I feel it. You have no idea where I'm feeling you right now. Yeah. I'd, I'd say Jefferson squats is the only weird thing I do. Other than that, I just do all the basic stuff, man. I, I, off my head, I can't think, but I know there's definitely something. Because yeah. there's, been, there's been a few occasions where people have come up to me and been like, man, like, what the fuck is that shit doing? And I'm like, just trust me. Trust me, that shit's doing something. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's funny because uh, I was, uh, James, you know that I was, I was in Morocco in uh, February and March. I was prepping over there. And in the, in the gym, they had a small area and uh, where you can stretch, you can, they can deadlift there, you can do whatever you want. It's like a little area where there's nothing going on. It's in the middle of the gym. And uh, the, the second day I was sitting down, I was, you know, I hear a lot of clapping. So the, 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 the canteen is on the top and you have to kind of go over the balcony and have a look. And I'm looking, I was like, I saw like six guys in a circle and they're just running around in that circle trying to warm up. And I'm thinking like, you know, what? if that was my gym, I'll fucking kick you out. <laughs> Oh, mate. It's you know, like, they're, they're going, you know, like, you know, PE shit. <laughs> that's, like, that's like Luke's old fucking thing with shadow boxing. His old vendetta against shadow boxing. Oh, my God. He used to, he used to, moan, he used to moan when we were training and he'd see some shadow boxing and he'd be like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> that, <that's> what... <laughs> oh, God. Um, James, we have a little, uh, a little subject that we want you to contribute in. Yeah, and uh, obviously your, uh, your opinion matters to us because for me personally, uh, and I said this to you before, you're the ambassador of bodybuilding here in the UK, not because of anything else. It's, it's the personality that, and the way you carry yourself. So your opinion matters here. Aesthetics. Yeah. And um, obviously, how do you guys grow up to 300 pounds trying to keep that waist nice and tight, gut nice and tucked in? And, and, and where do you see, where do you see we're going with this here in the UK? I mean, I mean, obviously we can't speak to the guys in the U S we, we can only speak over here, but generally maybe, maybe even the, the pro ranks, how, how do you see this going? Um, I think, so where does, what even in the pro league, what do I think that's where it's going to go? And yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we see, I mean, the, I mean, uh, what's uh, John the other day we were talking about Roley, you know, not being too symmetrical, you know, he's, he carries a lot of muscle. The yeah. gut was out at some point, you know, yeah. his legs disappeared at some point, yeah. you know, we're trying to figure out if bodybuilders keep growing, is, is that going to be, cause, cause at some point it's going to turn into a different creature. Oh yeah. It can't, keep, <laughs> you know, yeah, it can't, it can't keep growing. You have to be realistic here. Most of the bodybuilders I like their looks have been usually when they're slightly lighter than their, their, heavy, their heaviest look. Yeah. Um, you take Justin Compton, for example, when he won, I think it was like uh, the cow or something like that, when he got first, um, John De La Rosa got second. Both of them looked their best, in my opinion, that show. And that was a few years back when yeah. they were probably maybe six to eight pounds lighter than some of their, what they would consider their best looks. Um, it all depends on the individual and their body, doesn't it? And what it looks like, because you've got the eights in 97, which was a bit of a mess. Mm. Got Yates in 93 which was pretty aesthetic and looked fucking amazing yeah. yet there's always going to be people arguing what's better bigger 95 95 was a bigger one than 93 was it better don't know I don't think so um, mm. Coleman everyone goes on about 2003 I'm like no nah, fuck that 1998 oh yeah, I was just going to say that yeah. you know I mean, what I mean it's well, like, earlier he was yeah, still well, massive yeah like fuck <laughs> like, there's nothing 98 and 9 fucking hell like Jesus beautiful physique um yeah. <sighs> I just hope, you know, I just hope that the pro league starts to fucking not place people when they spill over a bit, like in terms of like getting too big. Yeah. And actually, I hope they give good feedback. I hope they give feedback to their, their, um, to their members, to people that are in the pro league. Because sometimes I think that maybe they need to know from the judges directly so that they know what to do with their physiques. I don't know what the... Um, relationships like with the, some of the judges and the um, athletes because I do feel sorry for athletes when they think they've got to keep pursuing size mm, um, yeah. especially if the criteria seems to re reflect that when mm. you know in truth if you look at someone like uh, the Arnold I was just up Bonac beat um, Rami he beat Morgan he beat some really fucking big guys so I don't know they just got they got to just paint a picture of what they want and and not make the bodybuilders feel like they have to keep getting bigger because I think a lot of the time most of the bodybuilders don't like Jay Cutler didn't want to get to the size he had to get to. He says that, you know, I, yeah, was, gonna, 
I was going to say this because I asked you a question. It relates to this. Yeah. But loads of people ask me all the time if, um, you know, oh, if I if I could be in the open class, would I? And the answer is always no. I generally because I never yeah. competed because I never wanted to get that size. Did you ever want to actually be the size you are now? Um. Or did you ever think that you'd get to this size? Or bigger. No, no, that's not the question. The question is, when you were younger, did you ever want to be that size that you are now? Mate, do you know what? If I'm totally honest with you, my my opinion has changed so many times. Yeah. Like, I'm a constantly changing man. Like, my thought processes change every day. My opinion changes every day. Uh, but I allow it to because I feel like that's healthy. I, I, actually, I like that about yeah. myself. Like, I like not being so contrived and strict and forced yeah, to be something um mm-hmm. there's been times when i've looked at coleman and i'm like i want to be that and then mm-hmm. there's been other times where someone like dallas McCarver's passed away and i'm like i don't know what i want to be mm-hmm. like i take everything into consideration you know i have to look at the world and what's happening around me and make a genuine evaluation of things that are occurring in order to know what i want to do but the reason i'm still happy because i know that i'm five foot eleven i haven't maxed out my body yet so I don't feel too worried. If I was beginning to feel worried about like size or anything, then definitely I would be like, this is not, this is not right. Cause I'm a realistic man. I'm not going to put myself in a position where it's catastrophic. Um, so I, I, there's a certain size I want to be. And I feel like I could probably be it if I diet right. I feel like if Pat, if me and Patrick do a really good job this year and I diet, I'm very likely to almost bring what I wanted to bring. And that that's probably not far off of what I feel like is needed or what i want um me, me at like 265 on stage would be perfect in my opinion yeah um what do i don't you need to be still now on stage uh i usually hit about 252 250 oh. between 252 and 255 but i've always i've always kind of been the guy that i'm so obsessed with getting in shape that i know for a fact i pull food down and i yeah. over move you know i overdo everything um i overdo everything except the things that you know, I don't overdo gear. I can tell you that now. I'll tell you what I'm taking right now. I don't give a shit. Um, yeah. and I don't overdo, um, you know, uh, training. I know, I know training. It's just that sometimes I overdo cardio and I under eat. And that's just two things that I tend to do quite a lot because yeah. I learned from some old school guys and old school guys got on that treadmill, did two hours of cardio and ate fuck all. Yeah. So mm. I've just got old school mentality in me, but it's not going to help with new school body. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a yeah I, I don't know. Like, it's hard to, 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 to answer the question. Um, I don't want to, I definitely don't want to push it where it's going to make me feel like I've overdone it. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I feel like I'm in the right mind and stuff. I feel like I'm not too yeah. absurdly yeah. over the top. Yeah. No. <laughs> but how, um, how do you keep your, your gut nice and tucked in? Because you don't have a gut at all. I get obviously look listen it's off season now I'm like 300 pound roughly I get a lot of bloat I do get a lot of bloat don't but it's hard as right I can put my hand on it and it's hard um the, the and the probably probably is I don't I've never checked if I'm intolerant to anything I don't I just fucking eat um yeah. and uh probably could do a better regime when it comes to like control like I probably do a few hours with John fucking you know taking me through the, the vacuum ropes and helping me out and that's no bullshit that's me being honest um but the main thing is i suppose i'm not an overindulger i don't overeat i don't bang like growth hormone like crazy i don't bang insulin like crazy um i am conscious of bracing and i am conscious of tra- like training that area i'll do abs every other morning so i think it's just trying to keep on top of things because bodybuilding i think this is what happens bodybuilding's like this this is your improvement Goes like that, and then it will get to a point where eventually it starts to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just try and do everything in my power to keep things just slowly, slowly improving, rather than improve really quick and drop yeah. like a bomb. Yeah. Um, so it's just maintenance, man. I just try and do all the little things. I think as long as you can keep progressing all your different body parts whilst the waist stays tight, then fuck it, yeah. keep growing. You know? I'll even yeah. say that as a classic guy. Like my, my weight limit's what, like two fifteen? I'd like to be bigger than that, to be honest. I'd like to get as big as I could. But whilst keeping the waist, whilst mm. keeping the waist tight, you know that's my only thing about the open yeah. classes. I think a lot of the guys at the top are at the point now where their physique's been pushed, even though mm. they, you know it's, it seems kind of irrelevant. Coming I think it gives me a bit of faith. The yeah. thing gives me a bit of faith is because if I look at the bodybuilders who are my height, mm. like who were Dennis Wolf, um, yeah, yeah, a tiny waist. That's what I'm saying. So I feel like it actually pays to be a bit taller. Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. when it, whereas when you look at like the Jays, the Jose's. 
Like, yeah, they're gonna blow out if they're trying to get that size. Their their waist is gonna blow. It's it's just gonna show on a smaller, a shorter spine a bit more, isn't it? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Definitely. Um, yeah, so I think it it's not such a problem. I don't. I have seen bubble guts in the open, but I don't, but the people that are of a certain height in the open don't tend to get a, a look that I disapprove of. So it really just depends on who it is. Like you say, Roly's quite short, so he can get that kind of look. But yeah. but then I look at like Diasha, and Diasha's not quite as tall as me, but he's got a good amount of height in him, and he's got quite a long torso. But for long that, torso. he's got a nice a nice midsection. So, and he's a big boy. He puts on a lot of fucking muscle, so it can be done. Mm. Do you think? Do you think if if the if the if the waist does go out a bit, do you, do you think? I mean, this is a question I'm sure everyone's going to ask. Yep. Do you think that you can actually bring it back to, to getting smaller? I think you can, but you've got to do a lot of shit. Like, honestly, if you look at Nicholas Velou right now, Velou, yeah? Have you seen his waist? No. So, no. Patrick's boys, he's 212. He's short as hell. Um, he's from Switzerland, yeah? He's just, basically, him and Patrick have just spent this whole like, off-season not making him bigger. It's actually by making his waist smaller. And mm. it has come down a lot. There's There's things you can do, man, and there's ways you can train, definitely, and... There's exercises you can avoid. Um, the waist, my waist was the smallest it had ever been when I actually didn't do any fucking lower back loading for a while. And that's, that's not me bullshitting. My back weren't its best, but my waist was smallest. Yeah. So it's trying to, you're trying to find Sweet. a compromise, you know? You're always bodybuilding is a juggle. So do you want really thick lower back or do you want like a wasp waist? Mm. You can, some people genetically can have both. Yes, they can. But if you're not someone who's blessed, mm it becomes a little bit of a juggling act and you just got to do the best juggling you can with what you've got. Um, I'm kind of like, I know that when I'm in shape for a show, my waist isn't the smallest, but it's still nowhere near the biggest. And I look better when I'm fuller. Cause when I'm fuller, my waist actually looks smaller. So it's I've seen that. Of, is it, is it Prague? Is it Prague that you went full and you look no, complete? That was, was that uh, Spain, Prague, that was right? Spain, the first that was my debut. I just went fucking in heavy, man. Was it? I was like 270 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> yeah, like no joke. And I'll tell you what I did that. I, I freaked out at that because it was my debut. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I was like ready for the show. And obviously I'm like, fuck, it's the first time I'm going with the pros. Like two days out, I was like, I've got to eat, man. I've got to fit out. And honestly, I just fucking ate. I, I just ate that crazy. And I, t I took myself from being pretty fucking dry and nice to full as fuck, but with a film you know, with a proper film. Yeah. Done. There's nothing I could have done. It's like, <laughs> shiny, you know, it looks shiny. <laughs> I was bursting. I was fucking bursting, but... I know, you know, I know. It cost me. It cost me. I've done the same thing when I competed in Barcelona. It's, um, it's uh, what was it? The Barcelona is the amateur Arnold's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, I was like two days out and I was like, I was with a coach, but he wasn't really getting back to me. <laughs> I was with <laughs> I was with, I was with Sean uh, Pamphrey. He weren't getting back to me. Yeah. I was like, I'll tell you what, I'm doing this by myself. I was like, I know what to do. I was like, I always look best the next day after a show, after I've eaten fucking everything once Man. I've got on stage. So I was like, so I'm going to eat the day before the show like I would, like I just competed. So I ate everything. I was like, I ate absolutely everything. Then the, the day I woke up, I felt massive. I was like, I knew it. I was like, I'm dry. I was like, I feel massive. As the, day went on, I got, as the day went on, I got on stage. It's the first time I've never, obviously I'm only in the amateurs at this point. It's the only time I never got a call out. I was like, yeah, what's going on? I feel massive. And then I looked at the pictures. I didn't even have an ab. It's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the mistake people washed make. Out, like, completely washed out. The mistake people make is they forget that the stage always exposes. Yeah, definitely. It's different. It's different. You would have looked sick in the gym that day. You would have looked yeah, sick in the gym. Yeah, definitely. But this ain't the gym. Yeah. The age lights. And they're the different. The amount of clients I've had come to me, they're like, oh, if you would have seen me in the gym the next day, you know, I think we should push carbs next time. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work like one that. One of the smallest I've ever felt, like, but one of the hardest I ever looked on stage was 2014 when I worked with Nathan Harmon. Yeah. And uh, I won the Supers that year. And I was only 104 kilos, but... I, I was there, yeah. Yeah, like, I had a... I was... I, like I had a hardness on stage that no one else had. And I didn't know I did. I felt tiny. Yeah, and no. I, I was scared. I thought I had to eat more then. You know, it's the same shit. And I'm mm -hmm. sure with your wins, John, that you fucking sometimes, probably beforehand, probably didn't feel your best. Yeah, but the you, ain't meant to be, like shit. you ain't meant to be on stage and feel your best. I think, I think John, the British <laughs> final. Smallest guy backstage of the British finals. I looked I was, around. I was, I was just was, saying that. <laughs> I, I ain't got this. I was like, how am I going to do this? I was looking at... Um, Who's the uh, the black guy? Abu, 
uh, Abu something. Oh, I do know who you're about, yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he, in real life, I was like, That's this rap, dude's well. jacked. I was like, how am I going to beat this guy? But then obviously I look at the pictures after and I'm like, oh man, because I had that hardness, I look bigger than all of them. Yep. You know? Now, I was just saying that you, you were you were the smallest guy in uh, definitely in, in the finals because you had you had Michael. Michael's huge. Yeah, yeah. Michael did did uh, one of the shows actually. He 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 did uh, classic and open. Mm. Yeah, he's done the open as well. Yeah. You know, and um, really big. <laughs> yeah, he he's actually huge. He's not he's he's not even normal. I I don't know. I, I keep telling him like get out of uh, get out of classic. It's not even for you. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, the thing is, with, with, with looking at aesthetics now, do you, think, do you think at some point the classic physique uh, division will start to influence the, the open classes, James? Uh, to a certain extent, yeah. I think it already has started to, to a certain extent. Um, like, not majorly, but it, it certainly has started to bleed over in a sense that I feel like the physiques being rewarded so far tend to be better physiques. Like. Yeah. And that's just that's just in the last couple of years I found. Yeah. Um, probably since eighteen when Roden won, I feel like they kind of looked at things in a slightly different light, which is better for everybody. Mm. Um, and it'll probably only get better; like it'll only be even more kind of uh, I wouldn't say more strict because it is strict. But I mean, the the angle will be different, um, and they'll start appreciating people that look after things like their midsection and whatnot. Which, which is good because you should be rewarded for your work. And if you're someone that hasn't blown out your midsection, that doesn't happen by chance most of the time. It happens because you've been careful and you've been cautious. Mm. So, you know, you've got to praise a man for, for looking after his waist because it's easy to lose it. Yeah. Like, honestly, it, as a super, it's, it's not easy to keep. So, oh, yeah, I can imagine trying to push oh, to that size. Hey, like the food, you've got to just, yeah, the food honestly, like, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I eat a lot of food and I'm nowhere near the size you guys are, like, let alone the food you guys have to eat. Like. That's what, but that's what I mean. Like, any, like, fucking weight, if you're not careful. Whew, yeah, you know? So uh, I do hope it I, I do hope it does. Um, but I still feel like there's a place for the look that I feel like that should be Mr. Olympian in, in the open. I still feel like I always look towards Dorian in a sense that there's just got to be something about the figure, the character that just looks a bit outworldly, like something that makes them stand out and look um, stronger than everybody else. Like they look stronger than everybody else. Yeah. That's always been my thing with the open class. Whereas like with the classic, I feel like I definitely lean towards um, uh, the body shape means more to me in classic. Definitely means more to me because I've, yeah. I've watched, you know, I've watched the Arnold and stuff live and I, and I love classic. I love, I love, shape you know like steve lazarus and fucking uh terence ruffin and guys like that and, and i judge them just as much as i judge open bodybuilders and certain guys i do think should be winning um i did have um uh the gentleman who won who's with redcon i always forget how to pronounce his age but yeah. alex he um oh yeah 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 i, I had him winning because of he i saw him in the gym the few days before at the uh, dragon's lair yeah. and he just had a dryness to him that you couldn't see on someone unless you're on stage like well, the, the brazilian guy yeah, he was just dry as mad. It was just like yeah. the skin was so thin that you'd have a hard time beating that gentleman. Yeah, um, so yeah, there's things that I appreciate on different classes. All determined, like I feel differently about different classes. The yeah. one thing that goes for all is thin skin, dry motherfucker. That's the one thing I care about the most. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think in the open, in the open, I am not so fussed about the structure. Like I don't mind a little bit of structure being um, a bit off because I I respect the hard work to get to that size. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. Because me, obviously I'm classic dude, so I've got to yeah, say yeah. it. But me, like I judge people massively, like open class, classic, everything yeah. by their posing routines. Because I think it's almost like, uh, I, I honestly feel, this is a strong opinion, I feel it's almost disrespectful to build a physique at that standard and then not be able to show oh, it off in a nice routine. So I think that's like your portfolio as a bodybuilder. You know, it's like you work all year to build that physique. But if you're not willing to put that, and I know this, this isn't you because I know you put a lot of effort into your posing, which I respect. But I see a lot of guys, and, and it, let's face it, it is in the open, that just disres disregard the posing side of things. And it, that's the only thing that annoys me. You know what I think the problem I love, is? I'm a fan of bodybuilding, you know? Because the Federation hasn't made it a priority. Yeah, I know. It's not Whereas a joke. If it, was, if it was, then the motherfuckers yeah. would be getting in that, that posing room and working yeah. a bit harder. Yeah, because, they need to bring it back. Yeah, posing. like, listen, watching Sergio at the Arnold was amazing. Yeah. Like, when I watched him pose, I was emotional. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, every bodybuilder on stage should be giving you that response, really, shouldn't they? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, John doesn't like it. Well, that's what I love the most, man. That's what I'm trying John, to John yeah, doesn't like the posing. Can you believe that? What well, Sergio is? Yeah. He said he was yeah, all over the place. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like it, but the effort. I said, yeah. I, I said the effort he's put in was clearly, uh, what's the word? Ev uh, evident, you know? Yeah. I said, but if you're talking from a uh, actual pose uh, perspective, yeah, like posing perspective, I, I have higher standard for posing. Yeah, yeah. I do. That's my favorite. So my favorite thing about bodybuilding. I love posing. So he I put a routine standard. together. He actually he put a routine actually together. Off my standards, he was pretty wobbly. <laughs> you yeah, talking yeah. about the transitions, but yeah, clearly I, I admire him for how much. But then again, as well, posing. you have a better, you do have a better eye than most. Um, so your standards should be high, you know, and I, and I think yeah. that's good. I think people need to listen to some people like you a little bit more so that, therefore, the, the quality levels up all around. Um, oh, you probably yeah. do need more people oh, to speak shit. about it because yeah, I, I need to improve it. Fuck Jesus. And I know everyone else does. So why not? We all need to of work course. on it and make it better, uh, especially if you want people to actually want to turn up to the shows because yeah. it's a show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. What are you showing if you're standing there just doing quarter turns? Yeah, that's the problem with bodybuilding is it, is it runs that dividing line. Is, is it a sport or is it a, you know, is it a show? It's like theatre. Yeah. Like, and lately it's just, it's more of a sport. It's, it's the training, it's the eating, it's yeah. getting in condition. But it that, should be a show feel to it. Yeah, it should be a show feel to it. There entertainment. Should be a show to it when, and it the, is entertainment. If you yeah. don't know what bodybuilding is, you would go and be like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm sure if I went to the Royal Ballet, I know fuck all about ballet, but I'm sure they put on such a show that would leave me... Yeah. Speechless. Listen, and you should be coming out. Of, you should be coming out of a bodybuilding show, if, even if you don't bodybuild. Thinking, I want to bodybuild now. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Like, I, I'm like that when I come out of the theater and I see someone yeah. acting. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm gonna be an actor yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what guys like Tom Platz and that used to make me feel when I came into bodybuilding, yeah. which is why I loved it. Is because yeah. there was that whole feel of you know you should fucking want to be me because I'm the yeah. bollocks. <laughs> I wonder what it is. I wonder if his people are too fucking complacent because. They win regardless because, like I say, it's not a priority. I think so, it's what you say. The judges aren't making it priority, so why yeah. should anybody else? Yeah, we need to we need to have a shift on that. Definitely, that's why I always thought it's a good incentive when you have best pose or award because yeah, it makes people come to the show knowing that that's a possibility, even when they're not. Maybe they know they're not in the running for the win. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. See, I worry about my reputation that I can't pose. <laughs> I like posing. I tell you now, though, one yeah. thing I will tell you is posing changes as you go up weights. Yeah. Like, yeah, as I your body gets heavier. It's crazy. I that, yeah. you, you'll notice yourself because you're definitely heavier than when you started. Like, yeah. the look of your body as well. Like, it makes you have to pose differently. Yeah, well, you but probably don't have to, to do as much to look good when you're big because you're massive. I don't know, though. I don't know. Like, I look awful now, like, when I'm not in a pose. I look awful in most poses. Like, when I try, I can't hit a side yeah. tricep. I can't do a front lat spread. Like, fucking hell. It's <laughs> Honestly, so stiff, um, yeah. and it makes you have to totally modify and change your whole. Yeah, I mean, certain certain poses don't look good when you're two sixty, but yeah. it looked good when you were yeah two thirty five. And other way yeah. around as well. And, and other way around. Versa, because if I do this, I look like a runner, like a marathon runner. Yeah. <laughs> if I do that, <laughs> most you ever see the heavy guys just do this. Yeah. yeah. Like when you're like two sixty plus, like in a relatively good shape, you can literally stand there and do that. But yeah. You can't do none of this, like you can't do none of this. Like you just look fucking That's pony. <laughs> Can you? Like, ever see, like, we we should pig. use you as the guinea pig because you're one of the most open-minded bodybuilders in the open that like, yeah. there is. That's what I appreciate. We should I'll, cool. if I, I should do a routine with you and see what you could do because it would be sick. It would encourage me to work hard, so that's good. It would be cool. It, it would be it'd cool. Give, it'd give me a fucking. We should do like a, a guest spot, a show where it's one classic guy, one fucking open. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the end of the day like you're 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 running like you know you're one of the best bodybuilders in the uk you had the opportunity to to what's it you know lead the way i'm trying man i'm trying like, honestly like, i know I you are i know yeah, you like, are it's cool I, I know i'm not like the thing with me i'm very realistic i know i'm not genetically the one i know i'm not um in many people's eyes probably even a cup of tea to be the one but I believe in my fucking self and I know that people that are real know a real person and I'm, I'm down with anybody like that, like you boys. Like I, I just, I stand for what we stand for. Yeah. And, um, and I think the people that we stand for are better people than all the others. Fuck the others. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We're, so we're, we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to have a rant uh, coming from another, you know, another platform. Oh, 
James called us uh, wankers. The thing is, I didn't specify who they were. So I can't, no one knows what no one knows what to but, say. <laughs> James, trust me, with this with this quarantine shit, everyone's taking it on themselves now. If I say anything on a status, I receive a message like, "Dude, why are you talking about?" It? It's like I'm not even talking about you. No, I've seen it myself, mate. I've had it myself with everything going on in the world. I say shit, and people, you know what I mean. Yeah. But people yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, the, the the latest one was I get called uh, a neo-Nazi with this beard. I'm thinking like, seriously? Seriously? No. Yeah. <clears throat> Just because I had a, a bit of an opinion. So, uh, oh, anyways. We're all fucking human beings, aren't we? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I wrote some quick fires that I sent you to. I had a load of people send me questions for you, James. Uh, do you want to go through the, the questions from uh, from the crowd? Yeah, go through them. I'm seeing if I've had any more sin. Right. So the question for Mr. James Hollingshead, he goes, do you prefer to have the whole gym for yourself uh, without, inter uh, without interruptions or rather an open gym? Listen, <laughs> of course I prefer the gym to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where he was going to go. I, I play Transformers music out loud, which would never be played when we're open. Yeah. I have all the equipment to myself. <laughs> I can get as messy and as loud as I want. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I don't care about people. I'm just saying I yeah, do yeah. love gym to myself. Of course. Yeah. But it's the real world. And when the gym's open, I'm going to love everyone back. And I'm respectful of them. And I want them all to get their gains on. Yeah. Fantastic. But it's been a nice break. <laughs> <laughs> um, question number two. Um, How is it being a, a retcon athlete? And the difference between the previous sponsors, obviously keeping it nice and uh, clean. <laughs> you know what? I've actually never had an issue with any of my sponsors. I've got good relationships with all of them. So it's not, uh, you know, whether it be Caged, whether it be JP, A-List, those are the guys that have looked after me in the past. And all of them have been great. Um, Redcon for me has been uh, a massive life-changing move for me. Like when I was first trying to contact Aaron, because I reached out to Aaron actually initially, um, it was with the mindset that where am I in my career and what do I want? Um, and obviously when you're a, you're a professional and you're competing overseas, you want your profile to grow with it. And I just wanted to try and monopolize being an active pro and being alongside a company that's current. And also with people that I knew, because I know a few of them and I've met them. I've met Aaron before, Yeah, uh, you know, so I wasn't, there was never any discomfort asking actually the question, do you think one day maybe this could be a possibility? Um, and he was, he, you know, he was sweet as an art. And obviously when Luke was around, Luke kind of seconded it and uh, it was a smooth process, but I love it, mate. Honestly, they're really good people. Uh, like this is like, I did a poll the other day, yeah, about um, Total War flavors off the back of my own head, yeah. It wasn't even asked, no one asked me at Redcon. I just did it out of interest. And uh, I basically said, if there was a British flavor, what would you have? And it, and it basically squared down to Iron Brew. That was the, the winner. Aaron and all the guys have ordered Iron Brew to America, which ain't even there. They call me really? on WhatsApp. They're sitting there in the conference room, all sipping Iron Brew. Really? And then they're telling me how much they like it. And they're like, you know what? We'll do, we'll do UK flavour in Iron Brew. That's crazy. That's yeah, awesome. Listen, and that, ain't, that, ain't, that wasn't like oblig... That wasn't, they didn't ask me to do that. And I didn't ask them to do that. That's yeah. just like, they call like that, you know? Yeah. So... Um, they're great. Iron, they have a lot of respect. I'd love to try that actually. Iron Brew. That's that's oh, very intrigued. I'm very intrigued. I like Iron Brew and like pre workouts. As much as they are gimmicky, I do like a pre workout. So I love a pre workout. Yeah, yeah man. It's, it's just like, like cheers before the session. It's like starts it the session off, you know? It is, it is. And I always have my I what I do is always have my pre workout and then I talk about the whole, you know, I bang the world to rights for half an hour, tell everybody how fucking shit the world is. And then uh and then I get going and it's it's a great little bit of routine, isn't it? So yeah, definitely. Imagine doing that with some iron brew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be amazing. That'd be epic. I, me I remember uh, when I was much younger in America, we, uh, uh, for, for Thanksgiving, Coca-Cola had a, an actual Coca-Cola with, uh, with turkey flavor. Really? Can you, can you fucking believe that? How did that work? I have no idea. I mean, I didn't try it, but it's, uh, it's crazy, man. Like, people went mad over it. Oh. I don't remember. For, for St. Patrick's Day, we had uh, green ketchup. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Tastes the same. Tastes the same, yeah. yeah it's just coloured, yeah. Just coloured. That's my birthday, St. Patrick's Day. 
Okay. Oh, well, now we know. Now we know. <laughs> um, do you have more questions, uh, John? Because that question I asked right in the beginning about, about Luke's passing. Some, somebody's asked me, and I promise somebody asked me this, this isn't us being classic, yeah, no, no. classic know. youths asking you, who's your favorite classic bodybuilder? Um, I don't know what class is a classic. Let's say 80s and behind. Oh, so, you, so you want to say like prior? Yeah. Oh God. That's a fucking hard question, bro. Because you know I've got quite a good like. There's a a bodybuilders. There's a top ten in his head. (laughs) Honestly, there would be. Um, There's no snap reaction if I said favorite favorite class. Oh no, because like I've I've liked many. Um, Oh God. Yeah. Stumped. I'm stumped. Who can I ask you who yours is, Quilly? Just out of curiosity. Tom Platts. Yeah, what about you, Faisal? I don't have eighties guys. Um I'm I'm nineties. No, not even seventies. I'm I'm uh, we'll push it to the nineties. Uh, the nineties, that's like nearly everyone then, isn't it? <laughs> well well uh, for for me it's Charles Claremont and that's that's the classic look that I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Charles is awesome. Charles has got that look that's acceptable, acceptable to everybody. Like yeah. no one would look at Charles and be offended. Yeah. Um, Man, if I looked at the seventies, I, I can't I I really can't say, you know, because it, th- that look where the legs weren't that big enough yet. They weren't developed yet that much. <laughs> that's why I go Tom Platt. <laughs> you know, and that's what I mean. It's like because the legs weren't developed right, that if it, much. If it encapsulated more than just the physique, character, everything like that. But uh, do you know what? I'm going to go like someone like Bob Paris because of the, yeah. the whole. Because because the reason I say Bob Paris is because my massive influence was obviously Steve Avery, mm. and Steve Avery's influence was him. So essentially, he's my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good that's good Bob Paris was sick oh so, because I liked how Bob could just stand there and fucking just do this and do that and just present yeah. himself in a way that just looked glamorous without having to be so yeah. heavily muscled um there was many others like that as well that I felt just were amazing at displaying their physique and making it like you say look so much better than it actually was yeah. um because the, the, the brighter yeah like, I feel like the secret like you just said there is with a great bodybuilder is hiding weaknesses and only exposing strengths and um, someone like Bob was certainly really good at that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to stick with him for that, for the old school. I, 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 have a, I have an argument to that, though, when people are saying about hiding weaknesses and stuff like that. Yep. You're standing in your pants. I don't think you can. No, no, but you said earlier, quote you, you what said earlier, that? it's easier to not look bad in poses when you're heavier. So you're implying that you do have to hide weaknesses. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking about what we've discussed. So I'm True. I'm being... so you are, <laughs> right, you're, okay, aware change... man. You're, you're an aware man who knows that certain yeah. presentation is better than others. Okay, I, I, we'll ch- I'll change it. In a posing routine, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely yeah. you can yeah. hide your weaknesses and show strengths. But in terms of winning a bodybuilding contest, I think the mandatories are, are built so that you can't actually hide any weaknesses. Do, That's do, you, hit, do you hit mandatories in a way, though, do you, being like a very good poser yourself? Have you tweaked certain mandatories in order to favour you? Slightly, but there's only so much you can do. There is only so much, yeah. But do you feel like... I do a front double bicep with a tiny twist that, yeah. you know, it, it's marginal where it changes. Did you do that when you won the British? Yeah. So if you didn't do that on the day of the British, you think you'd have won? J- James Hollis said, fuck me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do, you think, do you think if you didn't do those little alter- alterations yeah. on the day of the British, you could have still been first? I was pretty shredded. I don't know. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what I'm just trying to say. Uh, uh, being honest, you're probably right. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, can I, can I, I say something here? It's difficult. Like, my argument is that it's difficult. You are standing in a thumb. Oh, of course. Listen, if you ain't, got biceps, you, ain't you ain't got triceps, you ain't got chest, you ain't got a chest. No, like, yeah, that's not make it appear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you are right, though. If you, no, you're right. I, I do fight. We're just meeting in the middle. Yeah, take no, it, I, we're meeting in the middle. Yeah, See, I'm going to create more more of an argument here. but. Please. John, John, I don't agree with your side chest. Why? Because you stand too upright that your hamstrings look flat. Yeah, my coach... It suits him. Yeah, no, but my coach, James Nuellin, tells me this, and I fight with him over it all the time because I could show you my pose the other way 
and my hamstrings don't look any bigger. And it just looks like I'm sitting on a toilet. It will change your whole look. Yeah, I don't look majestic. I haven't haven't seen it, so... I want to look majestic, you know? Listen, I've always felt with you, I've always felt with you that you're still a a, a work in progress and you are excellent at at showing your physique in a way that makes you jump out. And there is weaknesses, like we've all got weaknesses, and you've yeah. got weaknesses, but you, are, but you are very good at putting all of your body parts in a place that makes it the best possible combination. Mm. Like your side chest, I like it, it's like how Evan, Evan Senapani does his. Yeah. It's like, he doesn't really bend his leg much, he just stands nice and tall. Yeah. And that is why you, your physique, it works, because you've found the best modifications to all the poses that suit your body and make everything look as strong as it can. Not, yeah, yeah. not everything's gonna be the best, but yeah. it's as strong as it can be. And that's a good fucking, that's a, a skill. And imagine like if you continue to progress at the level you are with your musculature and you can still have that skill with posing, what you're going to be able to do. Yeah. Right. And this ain't me kissing your ass and me being honest, because I can look at you. Yeah, no, no, no. Hey. I can look at someone else. Like you said, there was that, that black gentleman you competed against. I can't remember his name. Yeah. He probably I, had, all, I feel, I bet he had I all the body parts. Yeah. I bet he had all the body parts. Mm. But if you don't pose it. Mm. If you can display it. Right? Yeah, and that was his thing. His posing was yeah, was off. And that 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 just it reinforces your whole conversation and uh, the, an argument about the importance of how important posing is in bodybuilding. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. So people should listen to this and fucking wake up. Mm. You know, because you're a fucking great example of how posing can it can be the one. It can be second place or first place, man. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, absolutely. Do you think that changes as you get into the open class, though? Yeah, I do. I do. I still think it does to a certain extent. Yeah. I still think, I think there's favourites, but I think when it's like the top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if 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 Rami can't pose like fucking Bonac, he ain't beating Bonac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So you know, don't get me wrong. I always think there's a few seg- so I think there's a group that's always gets segregated from the rest of the pack because yeah. they're the ones that everyone knows. Yeah. And yeah. they're the ones that are expected to do well, and they kind of just get given the top six. And then yeah. in that position, it's about who's presenting. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's kind of, especially not like, I'm not saying that happens at every show, but. I think the role that you play outside the gym with social media and stuff nowadays will have an impact. I think it has an impact. Yeah, definitely. And it's not because because it's, again, it's not, sorry, man. I don't know. I I get really uh, fucking passionate when you talk. Yeah, no, I'm saying. Um, Not because anyone's trying to be disrespectful to anyone or. Yeah. Pick sides. It's, it's just that it's because it's, it's subconscious. Yeah. It's subconscious, man. Subconscious, it's like so, yeah. it's like if I listen to a song all day in the background, yeah. I didn't know it was playing. I'll yeah. start singing the words tomorrow in the car. Definitely, definitely. Same it's shit, subconscious. Man. I've said this. Yeah. It's not that the judges are trying to to favor people over yeah. certain people. But if yeah. they're in the limelight, you know, you've got someone doing good things for bodybuilding and someone who's in your face all the time, subconsciously, you know that guy, you're yeah. gonna look at them more, whether you whether you try to or not. That's yep. the human aspect of judging, you know, this Absolutely. is what it is. Which, as a bodybuilder, really, you shouldn't be going against it. You should play up to it. Like, why the yeah, fuck? Yeah, that's where this is a modern, the difference between modern bodybuilding and old school bodybuilding is a modern bodybuilder, the job comes outside of just the gym and the stage. Yeah. That Now you need to work on you. Yeah. Work on you, that you become someone that's likable, that you're someone that people want to look up. You're yeah, somebody yeah. that the judges want to favor us, yeah. like, subconsciously. Yeah. Um, Imagine bodybuilding if the judges were all robots and they literally judged it on like actual dimensions. Yeah, would be, yeah. <laughs> that would be like, mad. Oh my god! <laughs> Imagine who would actually win the shows. Yeah, that would be mad. Who would win the show if that was the case? I don't know. Oh god! Like let's say uh, like if I went for an like, open class, it'd probably be someone like. Uh, I think you'd smash a load of guys because of the waist, the waist to shoulder maybe, ratio. Maybe yeah, like like listen and and the thin skin. Look at yeah. Heidi Japan. Heidi Japan could have won that O. Yeah. Like, like yeah. if a robot was judging, yeah, and it was literally going on yeah. the body weight of the character, the amount yeah. of musculature, the condition, the separation and development, all of those factors that actually did a proper computer calculation. Yeah. I would, would love to know who's fucking Mr. Olympia. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not so, taking anything away from anyone, but I'm just yeah. saying. It's very, right, very interesting. Though. It's right, though. Like, the aura that a bodybuilder gives across is, is something that you can't... It's something that you can't visually calculate, isn't it? You know, oh, somebody right. told me about um, they was at the uh, at the Vegas and and they said that people were surprised that uh, Christopher Bumstead won the Olympia. They think like George Peterson and and Breon and that should have won based on condition and everything like that. But they say when I was when they were there, Whoa. there's an aura that Christopher Bumstead is high or whatever it is. There's an aura that comes across that you just want to look at him. 
Yeah. And that, that you, like you say, you can't quantify that. With yeah. like, that can't be calculated. And that's yeah. only something that can be experienced. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Maybe the judges are right to feel the way they do because they're actually there and they feel that aura. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's why yeah. the posing is so important because if somebody can pose in such a way that it makes you feel like you're almost enticed into their world on stage and, you, like, that's that's props to you, you know? Like, that's why posing is so important, why all bodybuilders should, you know... Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. More focus on bodybuilding, uh, on posing. It's the spectator should feel like they're forgetting that they're even existing. They should be yeah, in this definitely. cosmos with the person. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I think I think I think the the choice of music with your routines makes a huge difference as well. And yeah, not yeah. every not every and not every track that you listen to that feels good to your ear means it's good for posing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, like, and and a lot of people confuse that. Yeah, like, I'm I, always, I, listen, I love hip hop. Yeah, but it's, you shouldn't post it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, unless you can break dance. Yeah. No, it's just it's just shit posing music. It doesn't it doesn't represent what bodybuilding is i've always said to people that the best posing music for you is something that's relatable that happens to you in your life and the music correlates with that or a piece of music that makes you think of somebody like if you can like put some emotive behind the performance that you forget that you forget the crowd whatever the fuck it is yeah then you can you can like manifest that to a crowd you know Definitely. that's what i've always done every single posing song that i've done i could tell you who that it, it was about yeah, or what yeah, story it's a, it's a personal thing yeah definitely yeah every one i've done yeah and it's a personal yeah. thing for me, for my own experience. When I look back at my career, I can say like, you know, I've done that for that, that person. Or like, yeah. I can tell a story through, this is getting pretty deep, but this is no, how it's I think true. Like, no, it's true. I can look back and I almost tell, tell my life's work, my life story through my posing. Well, the song will take you back to the time, and the time yeah. was a chapter of your life. And yeah. you can, at the end of your career, you'll have a complete book of, yeah. of songs Yeah. represent the, the yeah. journey, the path. Yeah. You know, song one was yeah. about Thomas, Song yeah. two was about fucking grandma, or whatever. Song yeah. three was about my own fucking troubles during this certain time. Yeah. Damn. You could, do, you should do God Smack as your next one for Luke, something like that. I, he <laughs> loved all that. I hated his music, man. I tell him I fucking hated his music. Some of it's too <laughs> heavy. Some of it's Listen, I, me and Luke, like, I was just like, whatever, man. You're like, like you're, you're. This is your gym. This is your place. You, like, if you yeah. want to this and Zank, fucking do it. But if we were in Kings, it'd be my shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky because I trained, uh, I was being trained and Steve Avery was always in the gym with me. So, and we have the same taste, him and I. Yeah, I like Steve's though. Steve, weren't, Steve listened to some stuff that weren't as heavy as Luke. Yeah, yeah. So you can hear the lyrics. You yes. Know? Luke's one's like. <laughs> I like, I like Creed and like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So it's got a bit of. Mellow music. I don't, I don't like heavy music when I'm training. I like something like mellow. Well, no, you I like to get crazy. Oh, well, I, well, me and you are similar, John, because I don't even have to be angry to train. No, I don't have to be angry. I could get under, well, I don't really get on a fire plates anymore, but if I, I'll, you know, everyone knows I do like high rep squats. I'll go out for a 50 rep set for like three plates. I'll be mellow. I'll get yeah. under chilled. I'm, mate, I'm the same. Do you ever hear me scream when I do my sets? Yeah. Never. I only scream on the, on the hack squat because that really hurts. When Dude, I do, you, when get, I do, you, like, you fucking giggle. Negatives and shit like that. Yeah, 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 this yeah. guy giggles, man. We were training. Yeah. We got like to 35 reps on the hack squat and it's quite fucking heavy. And this guy well, giggles. He's covering <laughs> the pain. He's masking the pain. Yeah. I think it gets to a point where it don't hurt no more. So I think, fuck it. This is just fun. Yeah. Yeah. It does. I, I, I find a lot of people like um, sell the, the being angry in the gym thing. And I yeah. just feel like I laugh at most people on the internet because they're usually angry before they're set. And then I don't actually see the set. Yeah, so, like most of the time I see like influencers and shit giving it the whole roar and the bark, and then the video ends. Yeah, it's just, it's just them getting amped before the set. Where's the fucking set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would much rather be the guy that gets under the set proper fucking chill, and I move it without even stressing. And you think, yeah. fuck, that's not normal. That's powerful. Yeah. That's see, part, that's and cool. again, and again, that's me being around Steve Avery. I give him all the credit for this because even when I was angry, getting down, he's like, hey, hey, calm down, calm yeah. down. You know, we need good reps. We need good yeah. depth. Yeah. We need good contraction. You being angry and throwing the weights around, you're not Branch Warren. Let's let's it's let's put it that. Channeling, man. It's called channeling. Like, yeah. You don't need to hear it. You need to see it. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> watch my set. Don't fucking hear my set. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's the thing. Like, that's my biggest gripe in the industry right now. Is a lot of pretenders. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, and I'm not saying it's all about weight because it's not. But it's about intensity, and. 
there's a lot of people fucking trying to use the word intensity to sell themselves or a product. And I think yeah. to myself, I don't know what intensity is. Motherfucker, you don't even know what intensity is. Come, please <laughs> yeah. come train, come yeah. train, please. This is what I think. I get real passionate about it. I love so many guys and that who talk about training. I'm like, dude, you don't even, you have no idea what yeah. training intensity is, yeah. you know? Like when I trained with Tom Platts and he put me through some of that's the intensity. Stuff, I, 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 dro- I dropped to the floor after doing this. I think I've done 46 reps or something with whatever weight. I dropped to the floor and he makes you sure that you're doing squats with your heels jacked up. Every time you come up on the rep, you can't kick your hips out. You have to come up straight up, straight down for 46 reps, partials. I dropped to the floor after the set and he just puts a hand out. And I, I'm lying on the floor looking up to him like he's God. And he's like, he just, <laughs> welcome to the pain zone. And I'm like, oh, mate. <laughs> That's yeah, real, man. brutal, brutal. I, I, just like real, I just like people being real. And like, there'll be some people that watch this and probably think, James, are you being a dickhead? But the truth is, I've been doing this long enough to know I'm not a dickhead. Yeah. And I know that you boys ain't. Like, so. Uh, I know you personally. I know you're not a dickhead. <laughs> I like real work. I like people to do their job properly and like not yeah. pretend. That's just all it is. Yeah. True, you know? true. Yeah. Uh, okay. Guys, I got eight. We have to wrap it up. All right, boys. That's a pleasure. Uh, uh, James, uh, what's what's your Instagram? It's uh, Hollingshead89. So, guys, give the amazing gentleman a follow. And uh, obviously, John Lofthouse here and the dictator myself. Thanks, guys, for joining us. And again, James, thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure having you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Thank See you soon. Yes. See you, brother.